You're watching Capra Review. I'm Thasmeen Mahfuz, and on Thursday, in a controversial ruling, the Supreme Court decided to end affirmative action in college admissions. That means colleges and universities will no longer be able to consider the race of applicants. Joining us now is Maryland Congressman Glenn Ivey. And Congressman, what was your reaction? I understand you graduated from Princeton and then Harvard Law School. So did this ruling hit a personal chord for you? Well, I mean, you know, I, I think, um, you know, affirmative action certainly was helpful to me. Um, I'd done well in the schools that I attended and um, I, I thought had earned the right to attend those schools, but it, affirmative action certainly didn't hurt. Uh, but more importantly, I think from a, a national standpoint, I think it really helped to provide a diversity in colleges that hadn't had it before. Uh, certainly going back to, you know, the mid to early 1970s, many of these universities were uh, not only almost all white, but all male. And uh, so I thought the movement towards diversifying these campuses, whether it's from racial basis or ethnic or gender, I thought made sense. And I, I think it's been pretty much proven across the board that diversity helps not only to help with the educational experience, but in the workplace. I think, um, you know, many studies have shown that diversity is one of the reasons the United States has been so effective in competing at the world level um, and the business standpoint. So I, I think we need to make sure whatever happens uh, in the short run, that the universities do all that they can to maintain some degree of diversity at these schools so they can continue to, to turn out people who are, um, able to work in diverse environments and, and make a difference for uh, the United States and the world. And what's your response to conservatives who say the Constitution should be colorblind? Well, I mean, I thought Justice Jackson really addressed that pretty directly. I mean, um, the Constitution is explicitly addresses, for example, the end of slavery uh, and, uh, you know, the, the three-fifths of a man provision remains in, in, in the body of it. So it's pretty clear that race was a key factor uh, in, in the Constitution and the, the, the effort to address the problem of slavery and then segregation and, and, and those issues that came up after the Civil War uh, and really came up through the Civil Rights Movement. So uh, race is there and there's no reason to pretend like it's not and that it's had a negative impact on um, many aspects of the country, especially in um, racial communities. Uh, like the African-American community, but also others as well. And so uh, if you really want to address a problem, let's let's acknowledge that it's there and take it on uh, directly and go head on with it, uh, as opposed to trying to talk around it. It's the same thing with, you know, trying to stop teaching about slavery or Dr. King or whatever uh, in these public schools, like in Florida, for example. Uh, pretending it didn't happen doesn't change the fact that it did. Pretending it's not there doesn't change the fact that it is. And so let's let's uh, acknowledge what's happened, acknowledge what is happening, and try and take direct steps to address it. So what's your worry now for the future? What do you think will happen? Well, I think we'll have to see. I mean, I think, um, you know, the California experience was they had uh, immediate drops in diversity in the state schools uh, in the University of uh, California system. Uh, I think, um, the selective schools at the national level are gonna try and avoid that. Uh, and I think they've been preparing for this ruling, frankly, for some time now. So uh, I think we'll have to see how it plays out. But I, I think in the short run, you're gonna see significant drops in um, uh, you know, racial diversity on some of these college campuses. Uh, you'll see probably growth in historically black colleges and some of the students they're attracting as well, um, in part because uh, I think, you know, students might feel more comfortable going to black colleges when you see the diversity drop at uh, predominantly white institutions. So there's going to be a lot of those things. We'll have to see how it plays out over time. But I think, uh, you know, in the long run, we've got to make sure we have diverse student bodies that are giving everybody a chance to get a good quality education and live uh, positive and productive lives. And we have less than a minute, and we're talking about this affirmative action ruling that's really been in place for decades now. How do you think it would have shaped the experience of your peers without it before? Well, I mean, we know what happened in the generation before me. My parents, um, you know, didn't have a chance to go to schools like uh, Princeton or Harvard. Uh, in fact, for many of those schools, they were explicitly excluded from those, especially state colleges in the South, like University of Alabama or Mississippi. Um, and so, you know, they went to historically black colleges. 
uh, if they did have a chance to go to college. Um, and, you know, by and large, they did, I think they did very well for the opportunities that they had. But it's also clear that, you know, Justice Jackson went to Harvard, President Obama went to Harvard. I mean, you know, uh, some of the opportunities that white Americans were getting weren't coming to black Americans because we weren't getting the same uh, college and university experiences, uh, whether it's from the academic aspect or the social and networking aspect. So opening it up really made a difference for, for my generation and, and many of those that have come since. All right, Congressman Glenn Ivey, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you.